We're now leaving Dee's Lake in northern BC. We are traveling along the side of Dee's Lake itself. It's quite a long lake, so we'll be following it for a while. So way down there is Dee's Lake, the town. This is Dee's Lake, the lake. And you can see right up in there, the lake continues on. It's a very long lake. A lot of the trees have already lost their leaves, but there's ones like that one, which are still nice and bright yellow. And the ones across the lake there. It's just gorgeous up here. This is where I've pulled off. There's garbage cans. And there are a lot of these kind of pullouts along the Cassiar where you can just pull over and spend the night. Hello there, you know winter's coming, right? This rest area is not too far past where I stopped to show you the lake. And it's called the Rabid Grizzly, which is both funny and terrifying. <laughs> but it's a nice rest area with bathrooms, picnic tables, lots of room to pull off with whatever size rig you're traveling with and there are no no overnight parking or no camping signs here so this would be another good place if you wanted to spend the night on Dee's Lake here. Look at these pretty little flowers growing here. They're kind of purple and white on the same flower. There's the map of the Cassiar. We started, well, at Kitwanga there where the red arrow is, which is where Highway 37 leaves Highway 16. And we started heading north. We stopped at Mesiadden Junction for gas after visiting Stewart. And we stopped at Bell 2, where the Bell Irving River crosses the highway, or the highway crosses Bell Irving River the second time. Bob Quinn, which was a highways yard. We didn't stop at Totoga. We stopped at Iskit for coffee. We spent last night in Dee's Lake and the red arrow up there says that you are here at the Rabbit Grizzly rest area. Coming up here on the right hand side is a camp, a resort. I'm not even sure what you would call it now, but when we lived in Dee's Lake, we became friends with the people that owned this place. They were from Wisconsin and moved up here, bought this place and moved up here. So this is where the Dee's River empties out. And this is the little resort that our friends tried to make a go of. He built some of those little buildings over there. It's totally off-grid. They really tried to make a go of having a, a little resort here. There's a big building over there. You can see the roof shining. That was like a, a big dorm type of thing where there were rooms upstairs. It would have been a place that people could have a retreat and they had rowboats and canoes and stuff like that that people could use here. It's just such a beautiful location, but it just didn't work for them. And they ended up selling it and moving back to Wisconsin. And I think it's been through a couple of owners since then. I think somebody from China bought it. I'm not positive about that. And then I think it went into receivership and I don't know who owns it now, but it seems to be people who collect old machinery <laughs> as well as maybe just come up here for hunting. I don't know. And we actually have a camper back there somewhere that we stored here and didn't pick up before they sold it. <laughs> just such a beautiful location.
I stopped to try and get some pictures of some swans out on this lake over here. There's about nine swans out there and a bunch of ducks. And there's also an eagle sitting right there. But they seem to be in pairs. Their babies should have turned or been turning white by now, be getting ready for their flight south. Trev says that we have a pair on the lake. We usually have a pair that comes back every year. And this year they had three babies, all of which have survived because many times the babies don't survive. I'm trying to focus on that eagle. He's just sitting there. nice little spot right on the river here. Definitely a place you could spend the night, if not longer. Here's the river. There's some people, pretty sure camping over there in that rest area on that side. Which, yeah, the river is quite high this time of year we've had a lot of rain. Those people on the other side of the creek at that rest area have a boat in the river. It's a pretty fast moving river but I guess if you've got a strong motor on your boat you'll be okay. Here comes the boat. in the river. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So that rest area was on the Cottonwood River on both sides and there are the blue rest area signs pointing to the entrances to them. And if you miss the first one, you can go to the second one, whichever direction you're going in. There's the sign for Jade City entering world famous Jade City since 1985. There is some of the highways people live up here in the trailers on the left there maintenance on the highway from up here. We're just going to pull in over here. We have free RV parking. You can see all the big pieces of jade. Those rocks there, that's all jade. All the way along here. And they are open year-round. Every time we've gone by, no matter what time of the winter, the store is open. You can go in and buy some jade or get a cup of coffee. Just look at these big hunks of jade. That's worth a lot of money. Huge. Jade City and the area around it was the filming location for a documentary TV series called Jade Fever that ran from 2015 to 2021. If you'd like more information, I've left a link in the description below. We also have places you can rent to stay in. And you can park your RV here for free. So this is the Jade Fever cabin Airbnb.
that was Jade City. Got a free cup of coffee. Bought myself another eight bracelet. This one's made out of jade, which is pretty cool. And I got a sticker. <laughs> Didn't get any in Dees Lake or anywhere else along the way. Couldn't find them in Stewart. But yeah, so <clears throat> got a sticker for Jade City to add to the trunk. We will next be going through the native reserve called Good Hope Lake. And um, nothing real special about Good Hope Lake, but the lake it's on is really pretty. So we will probably stop there and take a few pictures. The uh, bear sightings have been a bit of a dud this trip. I can't believe we've only seen two so far. That's almost ridiculous for this trip. <laughs> Freddie, Gracie, and me, Susan, for our next video, the last day of our three-week car camping trip from Southern BC to the Yukon. Thanks for being here, and we'd sure appreciate it if you'd give this video a like and subscribe for more car camping and RVing tips, tricks, and trips. Bye-bye. <laughs>